Hello, welcome back to ANOVA. We're going to talk about something called total variation. It's very simple to understand when I break it down the way we're going to talk about it here. Let's just write down what total variation is. We'll calculate it and then I'll explain to you why it's labeled the way that it's labeled. So total variation, we've been talking about variation and variance pretty much from the beginning. This is the total variation. Uh, it's basically equal to the sum of squares of errors that we've been cal that we calculated in the last section, plus the sum of squares among treatments that we calculated a few lessons ago. So you see, total variation is nothing more than the sum of these two things that we've been uh, learning about. So this guy is the sum of squares of errors, and this is the sum of squares among treatments. So it's the two types of 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 uh, variation that we've been studying so far. When you add them together, you get the total variation. So in order to calculate it for our particular problem, uh, it's going to be the sum of squares of errors that we've calculated is 113.4, and the sum of squares among treatments is 24.066667. I know I'm carrying a lot of decimals. Uh, and so the total variation, you can abbreviate it total variation or just write it out, total variation, for this problem is 137.466667. And you can write that down and circle that. So I could just stop there and say, hey guys, total variation. You just add them together, and then that's it. That's it. It's a total variation. But I want to go a little deeper to see if you know maybe you can understand a little bit more about where it's coming from. So for our particular problem, don't forget, we have three populations. We have the different people in the different states. So here's population one, here's population two, and here's population three. That's the kind of picture that we've been drawing all together. Now, don't forget that inside population one, we don't know the data, so we sample it. We don't know all the data. We can't know all the data, so we sample. So we say that n sub one is equal to some number. n sub two is equal to some number. n sub three is equal to some number. That's the sampling. That's the numbers that we get, right? Um, so what we've learned is that when we take a look at this individual set of samples that we've pulled out, we can calculate, of course, a sample mean, but we can also calculate the sum of squares of errors, which is how spread apart this data is inside of this population compared to the sample mean, which is the average value of all of those guys right here. So basically, if I take a look at these, these samples right here, then what I can learn from it is I can calculate um, how each sample, sample, varies with respect to, that's what WRT, with respect to its sample mean, which the sample mean is X bar, right? So this was basically SSE, sum of squares of error. So this type